Game two, Lakers got. I, I, I we expected a much better game than this one. Um, and whenever you get, yeah, whenever you get a game one like you got earlier this week, you don't expect a bounce back loss. I, I, if they're gonna lose, you didn't expect to see it like this. They got their ass pounced tonight. I want to get Carl's reaction first. Uh, first Man, this, game two loss. This is this is bad. Like I think they end up getting beat by thirty five points. If I'm not mistaken, like probably more than maybe more. I think it was thirty. Yeah, I think it was thirty. Yeah, they got really. a, little, a little bit back in the garbage time. Yeah, no, it was 40 at one point. That's how bad it was. They just came out. The first quarter was a pretty decent first quarter. The second quarter, that's when it kind of started to go downhill because they just missed assignments. They off the pick and rolls. They just didn't stay with their man. They weren't going under screens. They were just – it was it was bad. They were letting – like, Clay just shot wide open threes a lot. So, it was, wasn't great. Bad rotations. Um, yeah. yeah, defensively for a Lakers team that kind of – I guess, you know, we know they're not in the lead. We talked about this the other day. They're not in the lead offensive team at all. They kind of – been able to stay in games and win games because of their ability to get stops. Um, I, I, I like one of the uh, the craziest stats was their three point shooting percentage. Like coming into this game, it was ridiculously bad. And so, if you look at them, you're like, "Oh, they're actually a really good team. How can they shoot the three this bad and still win games and make it to the second round?" It's Crazy. because they're able to play to their strengths on offense and they play great defense. And tonight, all that shit fell apart. They were horrible on defensive end. If, like I said, if we're gonna get a game two loss, didn't expect it to be this ugly. You know what I'm saying? Blake, after watching that one, what are your first reactions? It looked like I was watching a JV team. Yeah, man. I'm, like, I'm not going to lie to you. From start, kind of from, I, I'd say probably from that second quarter, that in, towards the end of the second quarter to the end of the game, it just, it just got ugly. It yeah. got ugly. Like, like y'all said, yeah. this rotation is just leaving Clay wide open, letting letting him just do it and basically get whatever shot he wanted. So, yeah. 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 It's, almost, it's almost like they forgot Clay is just as lethal as Steph. Like I, I honestly like why you you're you're continuously going under screens and not going over top of them just letting Clay just shoot wide open threes. Like if anybody you go let shoot wide open threes, I know Jordan Poole can shoot, but he occasionally he'll throw throw up some air balls. I'll let him shoot rather than anybody on the team. Why are you letting Clay Thompson, one of the best shooters of all time, get wide open? I don't I I don't get it. And then like you said, A D didn't even play good either. So it was it was a plethora of things. LeBron had his best had his one of his best playoff games this this playoff season. And they still lost. So it's yeah. I don't know. Uh to the Anthony Davis thing, you know, I was reading an article, I think it was by the ringer the other day, and no, it was by CBS. And they were basically talking about this is the playoffs where Anthony Davis has to prove that he has an opportunity to reestablish himself as the number one player in basketball, or at, at least as a top three, top five player. It's mm-hmm. wide open. You know what I mean? It, it's been that way the last couple of years. It's pretty much been first guy to a ring gets that title as the number one player in the game. Right, Anthony Davis, he comes in as his dominant game one, you know, and, and everybody's on him. You know, they're like, if he can keep this up, then this is the return of the 2020 version of Anthony Davis where he comes out of the finals and we look at him as one of the best, one of the five or three best players in basketball, you know, has a great game one and then follows it up with the sorry performance tonight. But he got great looks. So I'm not, you know, I don't want to sit and give this Warriors defense too much credit. Like it, a lot of the shots were just makeable looks. These were yeah. paint jumpers. These were floaters. Like he missed a couple of easy floaters around the basket off of pick and rolls. Yeah. Just, be, just, just, it, and, and only eleven shots up. So I will yeah. say they did a good job. One, one thing I like, and when you look at the low shooting numbers, you know, I will give the defense some credit. They did, they didn't let him get in his comfort zone. So we mm-hmm. couldn't get a lot of those face up looks or whatever that he usually want to take. So I give him credit for that, uh, you know. But but you you want you want more out of Anthony Davis, and they've been trying to ride this whole AD is going to be our number one option thing the last couple of years. Well, if you're going to get that, then you're going to have he's going to have to figure out and have these nights. It can't he can't have these nights like this to where he's just having a tough time getting shots up where he's blowing the looks he's getting. I know players can have bad games, but we always kind of question AD's consistency, especially over the last couple of years. My problem is to me, if you're if you're Los Angeles Lakers, almost every game that you play, you should start out for, not force feeding Anthony Davis, but hell, yeah, if they should force feed Anthony Davis, at least try to get him going. They didn't really feed him early in the game; they were kind of just shooting threes and shooting jumpers. I'm just like, what are you all doing? And then he got a couple shots in the first quarter, and then ever since then, he kind of just seemed like if they were giving the ball, it kind of just seemed forced and it seemed it didn't seem organic. But to me, to start the game, you should definitely at least try to get him involved early. Mm. Yeah, and so he was definitely out of he was out of rhythm. Whole yeah, game. that's what it was. Was they did get him involved? My bad, Blake. They did get him involved, but he still didn't execute on those. Yeah. Which killed me. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just saying six. that because they didn't because he didn't he only shot eleven shot attempts. That's why I'm saying at least I don't know. We'll see next game. No, yeah, I mean for someone, I guess for someone who you claim that you want to be your first option, it is I don't think it's the best strategy to just not give him the ball, not feed him. At least feed it. Start off by feeding him the ball, letting him get his rhythm together, let him get a couple of shots up. Just give him the let, put the ball in his hand and let him make a play or a couple of plays. Just get him, get him right. He's gonna he's gonna be the guy eventually that can just carry you. I guess the stretches the stress of the games. He's got the ability to do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, he just yeah, no, nah, he just wasn't he just wasn't like I said, eleven shots is not a, a ton of shots from him. And I know they definitely did get blown out in the third quarter, but there's no way to me he should have probably less than eighteen shot attempts a game. For him to only have eleven shot attempts is, is unacceptable. Yeah. Uh one thing I do wanna point out about this game, and I think it was impressive, is you know, if you go to the Steph Curry conversation, you know, game one's about Jared Vanderbilt, right? And the defense he had on Steph Curry. And then tonight, I mean, I think Steph still didn't look dominant from a scoring standpoint, but what we did see from Steph, this is something that you have to recognize about him is even when he's not scoring the ball, he's a hell of an effective player, right? So Curry's been kind of an off ball dude, you know, really since the Kevin Durant thing and and alternating those point guard duties tonight, really since game seven, they, the Warriors have started to put him in a lot more pick and roll. So we saw it, especially tonight, his distributing was awesome. And so he was able to make up, for some for that lack of you know dominant stuff we see from from a scoring standpoint you know with mm-hmm. those setups he had he had some amazing setups even you know some of them that didn't turn into assists you know where, where, where a lot of stuff was orchestrated by him so you like seeing great players if they had their strongest suits taken away from them you know they can still substitute with other things vandy may have did a good job defensively keeping him keeping him from scoring but he kept that rhythm going for golden state you know, and, and the Lakers' whole game plan was let's let other guys beat us, and those other yeah. guys did beat you. You put, you yeah. give Curry all these all this attention. We forget he can still make plays. He stand, he can, he can still do things. One of the most underrated parts of his game that kind of got lost over the last couple of years is his ability to facilitate, and that's rightfully so, mm-hmm. right? Because we see him do a lot more off ball stuff and things of that nature. But um, tonight he proved, hey, if you want, if you put the ball in my hands. And I remember Jeff Van Gundy just kept saying, even since the Kings game, give the ball to Steph, let him orchestrate. He can do those things. So I, I, I like this whole letting Steph run a lot more pick and rolls and, and, and kind of letting the offense run through him and all of that. I, I like that they're doing that. I think they should keep their foot in the gas. They did a lot more. I think they had a couple more pick and roll plays with Curry tonight than they did in game one. That's something they have to keep their foot on the gas for, you know, because he was great in that, you know, and, and that he made a lot of stuff happen out of there. Yeah, I feel yeah, like people can get Steph yeah. enough respect for being a great facilitator. You know, yeah. we, we get caught on the score. We get hooked on the score and all that, the big numbers. But at the end of the day, he's really still a true point guard, somebody that can not only score but also pass the ball and get other people involved at a very, very efficient rate. Yeah. Like Todd said, he had eight assists at halftime. I can't remember. I know Malika said at the halftime show. That's the most assists he's ever had in the halftime at a, at a playoff game in his career. So eight assists at halftime is great. So I knew they were probably going to have trouble guarding some of the players they did because they tried to double team Steph off of screens or whatever the case may be. But like you said, they they were basically saying we're going to let the other guys beat us if they are going to beat us. Like Michael Green had a game, yeah, like four threes. Like I, I guess you will live with him shooting threes, but you should not let him get a certain amount of points because he he's a decent player, but he's a player that you shouldn't be allowing you to beat like him to beat you in order to factor for you to lose a game and like i said clay already said it but clay they shouldn't have let him get some of the wide open looks that he got but it was really it was it was a plethora of things where they lost this game they ad wasn't really in tune it's kind of a shame because we were waiting on lebron to have his iconic type of stamp on the game he had a great game and then they lose by like damn near a a thousand points or whatever case may be so it's it's I guess you can probably say the likelihood of the, the, the Lakers winning the game is going to have to go through Anthony Davis, like everybody else knows. If LeBron plays well, if he gets his 30 points, it's more likely that if AD gets his 30 points, they're going to win that game. Because when they dominate inside, it doesn't matter what the Warriors is going to do. From three-point line, two-point, it doesn't matter. If you dominate inside, you give yourself a great chance to win, especially if you play great defense. And they didn't do neither of those things like they did in game one. That's why they lost. Yep. I mean, they got beat. They got, I think they got beaten points in the paint tonight, too. Like, yeah, you know right. what I mean? That, that's their whole strong spot, you know, is their points in the paint. They got out-rebounded, right? Like, if the Lakers, if you, if, you're, if you know you're a good team down low in the paint, 
in that area, then you gotta you gotta you have to win those, right? You have to win where your strengths are at. You're not gonna win the three point side of things. You have to win where your strengths are at. So you're a team that's your entire MO. We literally just talked about this the other day. If your whole MO is being able to get down in the paint and get buckets, that's where majority of their points came from. I mean, that's most teams, but a vast majority of Lakers buckets have not come from three. Have not come from jump shots there are a lot of buckets inside so you can't get beat where your strengths are at um yeah. you know and you mentioned carl the whole we're gonna try to let other other guys beat us like as a, as a strategy the warriors that's the last team i want to use that strategy against that team has way too many shooters like i no. I, I would never feel comfortable saying let's let other guys beat us and then here's an underrated thing not, not my bad cutting you off here the no, underrated yeah. thing is clay thompson shot creation like the stuff he I, I haven't this season and I think last season really since the injury when they put the ball in his hands and they've asked him to start getting making his own looks the mm-hmm. off the dribble stuff he's beating dudes off the dribble he's knocking out shots off the dribble I didn't see as much of this in the earlier clay days like pre-injury so that's also a real dope dynamic that I think is helping them out a lot yeah I was just gonna say it's just yeah, but I I want to piggyback off you said with Clay. He definitely this season coming to this season, he definitely improved his ball handling a little bit because you see him like you said, it's a lot, it's a couple off more off the dribble buckets that he gets a game now because at one point he was just a catch and shoot type of player, so he mm-hmm. definitely improved with that. But the thing that this is what's frustrating to me about this Lakers loss, you win game one basically, even though the even though even though the Warriors basically had twenty plus threes or almost twenty plus threes just like they did this game. You didn't play well in the paint and you expect to win because you're not a good shooting team. So you can't outshoot the Warriors. So you just need to keep on doing what you're good at is playing defense and scoring points in the paint. They did neither. And that's why they got blown out. Now, if they would have continued, like, look, if they would have continued to score points in the paint and dominate like they did in game one, this game would have been a lot closer. But the fact yeah. that they didn't and then they gave up all them threes that they did to the Warriors, I think like 21 plus threes. That's why they got blown out. So. And it looked like they were trying to outshoot them early. Like yeah. early, in the game, they, were, they were going for the three ball. Like it was like they made it because, and, and maybe I get it because if you look at their three point numbers, they weren't taking them and they weren't making them. So I, maybe it was like Darwin him going like, "Hey, let's try to get some more looks from you. Let's try to open the court up a little bit." Um, and they just weren't going down. But it looked like early they were going to try to hone in on that. And I, I mean, I'm not going to say yeah. it's, a, it's the reason they lost, but like I said, you. Biggest thing, you can't get beat where your strengths are at. You have to try to play to your strengths, win though, win that game. You know, you you can't shoot out against the Warriors. I'm not saying they try to do it, but when when a team, this is what I noticed about the Warriors over the last what six or seven years. When you try to outshoot the Warriors, it doesn't work. You're you're not going to be able to do it unless you got a carbon, unless you got a clone of Stephen Clay on your team. It's not going to work. So just play to your strength and be good where you're, and just continue to do the things that got you there. They're a, they're a good paint. They're a good scoring paint team. Don't try to outshoot the opposing team that is good at shooting threes because you're not going to do it. Because one, like you said, they're brick city. They don't. They can't shoot. That's not the strong suit. It reminds me of the 2020 bubble team that they had. They just can't shoot. So they just need to face their reality and do what they're good at and dominate the game that way. Because that's the only way you're going to have a chance to beat this team. Well, part of that, even with that, Golden State wants you to get into a shootout. With them. So I mean. That's the point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah either, either, either way, yeah. Either way, you just you you kind of kind of sol. Either way. Yeah. I mean, one 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 thing we're getting from this series, and I, and I think we're gonna get you know we're gonna get a better game three, right? Like I don't I don't think I think this is gonna be the only game this series where we're gonna get a blowout like this. Like I don't think this happens again. I don't think it is. I don't um, think so. Yeah. I don't think it is. I think the Lakers are going to blow them out just like that one game to watch. Yeah. I, don't think so. I don't know. I think, I think we're going to see a whole lot. Well, not a whole lot, but I think we'll maybe we might see one more Warriors just manhandling the Lakers. I think. Yeah. 